Um, so very much appreciate you all joining me today. Again, my name is Mike Cotton. I look after sales for Pure Channel Apps. Um, and in today's webinar, um, I'll take probably about 30 to 45 minutes of your time to, to run through what we've seen in terms of a lot of the partner communications with clients we've dealt with over the last six years of being in business and how we've come to solve some of those issues with those partner communications. So what I'll run through is just an overview of our company, um, talk through some of the issues that we've seen over the years, over sort of 30 years of being involved with doing partner communications and, and channel marketing. Um, then I'll go in and give you a brief overview of the platform that we provided to a few clients and how it solves some of those issues. Give you a couple of case studies um, and examples of what clients have done and best practices that have happened. And then give you a quick insight, quick demo into the platform if, if time is permitting at that stage. Um, if you have any questions, please do uh, put your questions into the dashboard uh, as and when they're, they're coming through. Uh, if you can't hear me or if anything happens with the slides, please do ping me as soon as that happens so I can uh, be aware and I can adjust things as I go through. So without further ado, um, just going on to a little bit of an introduction to our company. I'm not sure if you all are aware of our company. Uh, we're called Pure Channel Apps. Uh, we've been in business since 2011. Uh, we really focus on software technologies that support the channel. So particularly within the IT sector, and particularly focus on uh, communications and engagement with channels, uh, whichever channels those might be, whether they're alliances, OEMs, resellers, distributors, etc. Um, and really, based on our sort of 30-year experience in channel marketing, we've seen a couple of areas where there's opportunity to improve those uh, communications both to and through the partner community. And really, that's where we've developed uh, three main products. One is social on demand. Uh, which we won't be going into detail today, but Social On Demand is a social syndication platform. What that means is that you can push social content from you as a vendor through your channel partners, again, whichever channel partners you might have, so that they publish it onto their own social media accounts. It's really a through partner marketing uh, piece of um, software within the social media space to make those resellers look like thought leaders and start getting more engagement with their uh, followers. So that's social on demand. Uh, partner portals, we've built a number of partner portals for clients and we have a CMS system that is again focused on the channel space, so what's required from the channel space and making content available to partners based on either what they want uh, or what you want to provide them. So very kind of tailored to channel marketing um, within the partner portal space. So that has things like deal registration, uh, asset libraries, um, MDF um, requests, um, links into incentives and learning management systems, etc. Everything that you'd expect from a partner portal or, or the components of that. Um, so those are our two other products. The product we're going to be focused on today um, and look at around those issues is, is the news on demand platform. Again, there's many clients down there that you probably recognize. Um, although we're a UK-based organization and do our development out of the office in the UK, um, probably 75% of our, um, our customer base is, is in the US, um, and we support those um, on a global basis. So just taking us on to some of the partner challenges that you're probably aware of out there. I'm sure if any of you got involved in partner communications at all, a number of these uh, particular challenges will jump out at you. Uh, certainly from our experience, we so came into this having developed newsletters for clients on a monthly basis for years and years and years. And really many of those newsletters were the typical one size fits all newsletters delivered at the end of the month with however many articles in, maybe 20, 30 articles in. Um, and they were going out to the entire database of, of users, whatever partner types, tiers, products they were selling, et cetera, um, or, or types of users, you know, whether they were sales, marketing, technical, going out to, to everybody within the database. And what we were seeing certainly over the last five years in particular 
is that the engagement with that content was dropping month on month. So the open rates, the click rates were continuing to drop month month on month. Um, and again, that's because you know we're all extremely busy. We get a lot of newsletters. We get a lot of emails coming through our system. And if we look at an email or look at a newsletter and maybe we look at the top article of that newsletter and see that it's not something relevant to me or engaging to me, you know, there's a high probability that I'm just going to delete that email or I'm going to ignore it. Um, so those were, you know, some of the issues, some of the challenges that we we saw. Kind of from another side, we also saw that the actually getting the production, getting that newsletter out the door was extremely challenging as well. So whether you're doing it kind of in one language on a global basis or you're even more complex and doing it uh, on a localized basis, so translating it and pushing it out through lots of different regions, it takes a lot of time and effort, as, as I'm sure you'll all testify. And that really is in, in many formats. One is obviously somebody's got to write the article, um, which is important. That's got to be improved by somebody, probably globally, maybe somebody from a, from a legal perspective. Then you've got to get all those articles together, all those approved articles together, get it, build a template, put all those articles in a template, get the database with the right contacts in it, um, get that approved, and then get it out the door, and then potentially go on a step further and get each one of those articles translated, get it approved by the local organizations or local resources, and then again, do the same process for those people on a localized basis. So yeah, that process was potentially taking three weeks to, to do and to get it out the door because you're waiting for you know, one article, for all the articles to be written and all the articles to go through uh, to be approved. So we've, um, We've changed that around in, in a number of ways, which I'll, which I'll go um, into in more detail um, in a minute. So certainly we did some uh, research and we did some surveys with a number of the uh, resellers through some of the distributors that we've, we've been talking to, to find out you know, kind of what is the answer to this. Um, and a lot of people came back saying that you know, they wanted more of a personalized approach to um, they wanted more of a personalized approach to the communications they were getting from a brand. Again, you know, as we all know, a lot of these resellers are selling multiple different uh, vendor products and are getting the same communications from lots of different places and multiple communications from, uh, from various different sources. So they wanted to, A, get timely news um, and targeted news of so what I want and when I want it. So if it's relevant to me today, I want to receive it today. I want to read it. I want to go into my meeting tomorrow and have that piece of information. Um, they also want to be in control over what they get. So rather than receiving that one size fits all, which we were talking about a minute ago, they want to be in control uh, of the content and of the frequency of the content. And they also want it simple and easy. And again, when we come in, I've got some stats sort of later, later on, but you know, we look at the kind of way people are digesting this content. Some people want it on a mobile device. Some people want to read it through the partner portal. Some people want to read it through the standard traditional newsletter. So lots of people want their communications in different ways. And we should be able to supply that in, in different ways across those different platforms. So kind of how we went about solving that issue um, was we built this platform that we call News On Demand. Um, that we've delivered again to a lot of clients on a global basis um, from anything from sort of 5,000 contacts to probably about 250, 300,000 contacts uh, at the moment and, and increasing. And again, the, the two areas that we really focused on here, one was the personalization from the user perspective. So allowing the user to self-select the content that they wanted to subscribe to. Um, yes, we can originally set those users up with the right preferences based on whatever we know about them. So are they in sales? Do, will they want sales material? Do they sell a certain product? Will they want that product material, et cetera? So you can do certain settings to start off with, but allow them to choose whether they opt in or opt out of those different categories, those different types of content, whether it's by, by competency, by job role, by vertical, by product, however you want to set it up within the system. So that's one side of things. They're getting now getting a personalized experience of each one of those articles when they want and how they want it. And then on the content authoring side, uh, do two things. One is embed a workflow in the system whereby the content can be created uh, in a WYSI WIG editor, so there's no need for HTML coding for that particular article. Um, 
and then have a workflow whereby that content can go through to an approver. Again, that could be a global approver, could be a compliance approver, and then potentially drop down to a regional approver and have that content translated at the regional level and approved at a regional level to go out to the regional users. So that is all a workflow in the system. The people, the right people within the organization will be notified through that workflow and told when those articles are available and whether they want to accept them and localize them for their different markets. So that, that's in, in the system and you can see as it goes through who's approved it, who's reviewed it, who's edited it, et cetera. And then that content will then go into that template and that template will be sitting within, embedded within the system. And that template is very much down to you to define you know, what you want and how you want it to look. So that's embedded in the system. Each one of the articles as they're written and approved will dro drop into that template and go out to those users again, based on what of those users are subscribing to. So there ends up being a matching process between, process between the people creating the content and who they want to provide it to and the users who are subscribing to certain types of content. There is always content that you might want to push through to people so they have to receive it, critical information, major, major announcements, et cetera, and you can push certain content through to them and not allow them to unsubscribe from certain areas. But the rest of it is things that they, they could opt into or opt out of. So those are the two sort of main sides to the system. And they've, again, been deployed by various clients. A couple of uh, the clients that are working with at the moment are Nutanix and VMware. Um, and Nutanix, from their perspective, they already deployed a partner portal um, already, and they wanted to embed the news within that portal, partner portal. So they very much wanted an integrated solution whereby what we're providing, the news and the newsletters, are embedded within that system and also integrated into the database. So integrated into their Salesforce data. So if there's any opt-outs coming through from our newsletter, they go straight back into their source of truth, their Salesforce source of truth, and vice versa. If there's any inf new information from Salesforce, it'll come straight into our system so we can manage those users. Maybe they've changed tiers or types or whatever it happens to be. And then more importantly, it needs to be easy to use. So you know, the people that are using it are the people that are writing the articles. We wanted to make it as simple as possible so those people could just concentrate on the content they're writing rather than on trying to navigate through a complex system. Um, and the same thing from the user side of things. So how could they enroll into um, different content categories and how could they receive that news simply and easily in the way that they wanted it? So we've been running that program for, for a little while now. Um, it's fully integrated, and I'll give you some uh, screens of that in, in a second. And the results of that are obviously the increase in the engagement with the content and the open rates and the click rates on that content. And it also provides extra information in that when people self-select those different categories, you can really see as an organization what people are interested in actually subscribing to and what they're interested in opting out of. So it really gives you more information about your partners and about the, the, the database of users that you've got in the system. So this first slide is the template that uh, Nutanix is currently using. Again, the templates that we designed for clients is very much down to them individually. So each one can change quite a lot. Um, the main parts are the header here, and that's down to them to decide. Within that header, there's some links to various different places in here and some information maybe if they're doing it on a newsletter basis on that particular edition. Within each one of the newsletters, it's always important to highlight the ability to change their preferences. So we, we always put that uh, up at the top here and maybe highlight it even, even larger than this. So users can always know and understand that they can come in and change their preferences within the system here. Down below that, based on, in this case, Richard's, uh, Richard's options that he's opted into, He'll get all the articles that are relevant to him as a user, both what somebody's decided to send to him and what obviously he's decided to subscribe to. And those articles will drop into the template here based on the criteria that the content author set up. So what priority is that news article? Does it need to go to the top of the newsletter? Or am I happy to have it fit into the newsletter kind of lower down? And do I want it as a a single column article going all the way across the newsletter, as you see this major one at the beginning here, or do I want it as a two column on the second page here or a one column article? 
Again, our system will fit all of these articles within the template as best it, as it is able for each one of those users that's receiving those different articles. So we're formatting that, we're putting it into the system, all that's done automatically as those newsletters are going out or those articles are going out. So that's one of the examples of the template. Um, we we'll go on to the communication preferences. This is the way that they've set it up. And again, each one of our clients sets up their communication preferences differently. So in this case, in Tanex, they've got it based on the industry um, that that user could subscribe to and also, also the use cases on the right-hand side here. Um, they can receive either HTML content or plain text. And we know uh, in certainly in places like Japan and Germany to a certain extent, people want to receive a plain text version rather than the HTML version. So that's an ability that they can do in the system and they can decide what they want to receive within the system. Of course, there's always an unsubscribe from the newsletter. If they do wish to opt out of everything, then they can unsubscribe from the whole piece at the bottom here. And again, the unsubscribe will go back to, in this case, the Salesforce data or go back into a report that will be provided to our, our clients. So that's the um, communication preferences. When the user gets sent that newsletter here with you know, potentially an image, um, a title, and a short article, that information will also go onto the partner portal. So you know, a place where your partners are accessing on a regular basis, they could see their latest news and read their latest news coming in through the partner portal versus the newsletter. So again, allowing those different options um, of different platforms for the users to receive their information in different ways based on where they're going and what they're what they're doing. So I can see my latest news in here. I can see all my archives. I can search for my information within here. Um, so I can look at those all like the articles. I can also read more information. So if there is a longer article, that longer article might be either sitting on a .com site or somewhere else, or again, it could be sitting within the partner portal and have been generated when the content author created that particular uh, newsletter. Uh, finally, within the Nutanix side of things, this just gives you an idea of what the content author side of things is like. So those people within your organization that are actually creating the articles, um, there's a couple of things in here that a user needs to do. One is to self-select the type of content that they're providing, the group of users you want to send it through to, and then really they're focused on creating the article down here. So putting a heading in and putting a short article in here. And that short article is going through to that newsletter. Okay, so they've got a couple of options, a couple of things that they can do in there. They can also prioritize that uh, particular article to sit higher up in the newsletter or lower down in the newsletter. So that's one of the examples um, with Nutanix. And I'll give you a bit of a live uh, information on that in a second. Um, the second part is um, is around uh, VMware. Um, again, we've used the platform for a number of different um, use cases at VMware. One is for their Partner Insight newsletter that goes out on a global basis. Another is for their employees. And also now we're doing some of their um, systems integrators, uh, so people like Accenture and IBM, who are receiving their newsletter through the system. Um, so again, they wanted a system that allowed them to have a centralized platform that everybody was coming into, adding their articles, having those articles approved through the through the um, workflow process, and then sent out to those different uh, users. You know, there's quite a few different um, options in here: the frequency, the different types of content, um, all of which were similar to what you saw within the uh, Nutanix side of things integration to the employee portal for the employee side of things, um, and then for the partner side of things, its own standalone news portal that I'll show you in a, in a second. Again, with um, VMware, we've been running for a little while now uh, on a global basis and also providing the platform in multiple different languages so that different language contents can go out through to those different users and they can access the portal and have the portal available in their own language. Um, again, the sort of three column template that you saw with Nutanix um, and the capability to manage that content uh, from their side. Again, you know, the results out of it is the engagement with those partners. So improving that engagement with the partners um, and improving the, the open rates and click rates. 
and also understanding a lot about the data. You know, often with a lot of our clients, the one of the most significant issues is the data and the quality of the data. Um, so now through this and understanding all the results of the clicks and the bounces, um, et cetera, you can really understand more about what you're, who, who's receiving it, who's not receiving it, and what changes they want to make to the system and what, you know, how good your database is um, through the system. Um, just as a, a quick example, um, this is a, a bit of data from one of the systems. And this really just shows you, uh, I think the interesting point of this is that those people have set their preferences. So this second uh, row along here, um, they receive you know, almost 2,000 articles and our read rate for that is 43%. Um, and, the, and the click rate on it is 19%. So, you know, pretty high open rates and click rates through the system with the guys that have um, set their preferences into the platform. And if you look at that in comparison to the people that haven't either got around to setting their preferences or in some way the data is not, not accurate, you know, obviously these guys are looking at sort of 9% uh, open rates and 1% click through rates. So, you know, a big difference between those people that are engaged and those people that set their preferences and are now getting that personalized experience from those people that are still getting um, still getting that newsletter based on you know the the, the preferences that are set through the system um, and if we look at this and, and this is pretty typical of uh, most of our platforms in terms of the engagement sort of 40 50 percent um, for those guys we look at that against some of the industry stats and there's not really any industry stats specifically on newsletters but you know general industry stats stats show us so sort of twenty-two percent open rates and two percent click rate. So, you know, with the people that have set their preferences again, getting a personalized experience, they're getting significantly better results than what we see from an industry standard perspective. And also, just in terms of how people are reading it, it's very important again that we're providing these different ways for the user to consume that content, whether it be through the actual newsletter itself whether it be through the actual portal, you know, whether it be on a mobile device, whether it be on a desktop, et cetera. Um, you know, and this, again, just shows the kind of breakdown of the way people are consuming content, whether they're on the road or whether they're doing it through the webmail, et cetera. So, you know, again, our platform with the ability to push through different, different uh, routes allows them to consume in whatever way they, they want. Um, another thing within the VMware area is the people that are visiting the pages. So, you know, another thing they would like to have is for the users to come back to the partner portal, the news portal, read the content and download resources within that. And we're tracking all that kind of information again through the system and are seeing the success of those people coming in and accessing that content. This is relatively new. Um, so we've only got a few months of data on that, but we're starting to see the increase of that. And finally, in this, uh, in terms of sort of uh, VMware and, and some other clients we've got, this just gives you an indication of the content category. So some of the reporting around what people are subscribing to. So this is Adobe's um, platform, and we can see you know what they're selecting, what they're opting into. So if I look down these different content categories here, you know, I can see that people have opted in or selected certain types of content and not selected other types of content. So it gives you an idea of how many people, what people are opting into, what, what content is more popular than, than other um, content categories in, in here, and who, which frequency do they want? Do they want it daily, weekly, or monthly? And again, in this case, probably weekly was a standard default. We see some people have moved to daily. Nobody's really moved to immediately, but some people have moved to daily and some people have moved to monthly. So again, it shows that the system is being used. It shows that people are changing their preferences within the system there. So I'm just gonna pause for a second and jump into one of our platforms. Um, first of all, I'll show you the VMware um, newsletter. So again, slightly different template. Again, the idea at the top here is this is the header and you can define, you can decide what that header looks like. You can work with our design team. We can work with your design team to make that up um, and have whatever links you'd like within that header. That header is should be you know, a standard um, header for all of your partners. You could have some regionalization, some, some uh, different regional versions of that going out to your regional teams. But you know, ideally, you've got some consistency for your partners with that, um, with that template within this newsletter. Then dropping down, all the articles will drop into this template based on however that author has created them. So, 
whether they put an image in, a, sh a, a title, a short article, and then potentially going to a longer article down here, and whether they want it to be three columns all the way across, or just two columns or one column across, and whether they've included other information, videos and pictures and images, etc., in the platform as well. And then down at the bottom here, we have the footer. Again, the footer is typically different for different regions from legal perspective, and could obviously also have the links to your different platforms that you want the partners to go through to and access um, on the side there. So that gives you a different, slightly different example, the VMware uh, one, we've looked at the Nutanix one. Then if I take you through to the VMware uh, portal itself, so this is the news portal. Again, the, the idea of this is that the user can access this content you know, either through the portal or through the newsletter or on the mobile device, whichever way they want to go. Within the news portal here, they have the latest news. So as I log in as a user, um, it knows my preferences. It knows what content I want to receive. And I'm getting that, that, that news, that latest news updated on a regular basis based on what's coming through to me here. So I can see my, my latest news here. And also on a tiled basis below, we can see the different news based on these different uh, solution areas here. So you know, it's a nice format, nice and easy to read, nice and easy to engage with. Um, based on that, and then obviously you've got this uh, banner across here that you can highlight certain things in it. Um, and specifically, you can go into My News here, and again, you can get the more detailed information on each one of those news articles. You can search, you can filter, etc., based on all of those good pieces. Um, so that's one of the examples. Another example, again, on the VMware side of things and just is, is the insights. This is for all of their partners. Um, again, slightly different. This is not tiled like we have on the other one. Um, it's just giving me my latest news and my latest email. So one of the things we can do with the platform is not only put everything as a news article, you can also send one-off emails to your contacts within the, the database. So if there's key announcements or specific things you want to send out, then you can send out those latest emails as well as your latest news, your latest articles that's going through. And within the uh, VMware portal, there's also the asset library. So the resources that each one of your partners might want to receive and might want to download. And we track the access to those and the downloads of all of those and the comments and feedback on each one of those items within the system. So that's the um, VMware uh, Partner Insight. Again, this is a standalone portal, news portal. Um, probably in 50% of the accounts, we have them as a, an, an integrated or single sign-on into their existing partner portal. And about 50% of people want them as a standalone portal that the uh, users can come and access themselves. Um, so that just takes me to the end of a couple of the examples of our, uh, our newsletters and how we've uh, answered those those problems that um, several of our clients have had in terms of their communication issues. Um, we can see from the traffic, from the results, from the engagement uh, that those those levels of engagement are improving. The open rates are improving. You know, I think we all want that personalized personalized approach, and certainly with a lot of the um, marketing automation platforms, that's what we're doing. We're providing that personalized approach. So. You know, why shouldn't that be the same for your partners and allowing them to have that personalized approach? So, you know, we're seeing those benefits come through for the audiences in terms of that personalized comms, but also the ability to go into the archives and into a portal to read more information and, and get more information, whether it be the resources or the longer articles, et cetera. And then from the vendor side, from our client's perspective, it's really significantly reduced the time in creating those uh, newsletter. So no longer do we need to wait three weeks for each of the articles to be approved, reviewed and approved and get into a template and build that template. Those articles can go out one by one when they're ready, when they've been approved by whoever they need to be approved by. So you're now providing timely news based on what they want. You're getting a consistent approach to the users. So they're receiving all the news from one place. So rather than having product marketing sending out a newsletter, um, channel marketing send out another, marketing, you know, corporate marketing sending out another, that's all coming into the same platform and going out to those users based on what they're subscribing to. So they're getting that ability. And you're providing that global and local ability. So rather than each of the regions generating their own articles, the system can push those articles through to the regions. 
and they can leverage the content. If they see it's fit for their region, then they can leverage it and adjust it and translate it. Um, or obviously they can, they can ignore that content and not, not have it go through to their users at that regional level. Um, there's a certain uh, amount of uh, ability to change those templates, have some dynamic templates within the system and adjust those on a, on a monthly basis. Um, and also based on the data that we've got, based on the information, we can also restrict the views um, both for the users and for also the content authors. So certain content authors can only create content for certain certain areas, um, certain uh, types of content, et cetera. So those are sort of some of the takeaways, some of the ways that we've kind of improved things uh, through the platform. Uh, if you do have any questions, please do let me know um, and I'll, I'll start going through some of those, uh, some of those questions now. Uh, so there's one question coming in here. How long do you expect the email newsletter would take to create through News On Demand, given the number of content creators involved? Um, that's kind of a, a pretty tough question because it really depends on the type of content that you have, um, the type of process you have within your organizations. Um, but obviously, again, the ability for News On Demand is that you can just either copy and paste that content into the platform and send it through for approval. So, you know, that would take as long as it takes to write the article. Um, and then obviously it depends on, on whether the person that's receiving the notification about the approval, you know, is there to, to approve it. Um, but in terms of sort of stats that we've got in building content um, through news on demand versus old, old ways, we've seen, you know, at least a four to one reduction in time to create that, create that content, get into the system and get it out the door. Um, so, you know, at least a four to one increase in speed of, of getting it out the door. And we know that, you know, most people these days, channel marketing particularly, you know, there's limited resource, limited time that you have in, in creating and approving these. Um, just another question in terms of how many different languages can the articles be created in? Uh, so there's no limit in terms of the, uh, the, the content creation, the languages that you can put it in. We've delivered this on a global basis to most of our clients. Uh, they're, they're writing in, in double back characters, they're writing right to left. Um, so they're all an option within the system. You know, and that's entirely down to you as to how you create that content. We can provide the portal in multiple different languages. We've translated it into about 26 different languages so far, um, but it's relatively straightforward to translate it into other languages as well. So um, that's already available and already deployed in, in many different languages. Um, with news on demand, is there a minimum number of articles required to create uh, uh, a newsletter? Um, so there's no minimum number of articles. Uh, what happens with the system is if there's less than five articles going through to a user, um, the newsletter will automatically change its format and have that new, those news articles go all the way across the page. So even if you stipulated them as a one column article, if that user is only receiving five articles, it will go all the way across the page. So it'll make the, again, the look and feel as, as good as it can possibly be with those limited number of articles. Um, average open rates. So in terms of average open rates, um, you know, I guess we're looking at sort of 40, 40 or 50% for those people that have changed their preferences within the, the system. You know, the, the, the open rates, are, again, we can improve the open rates and we've improved them by sort of 10 to 20 percent for most of our clients. It's all down to the content. So if, you, if you're still writing poor content and it's going through to them, then they're still not going to open it. So, um, you know, there's a certain amount that's down to the content, the way it's written and how it's written, and a certain amount down to the system. Again, within the systems that we, the clients we've worked with, you know, 10 to 20 percent uh, increase in, in open rates, you know, getting up to 40, 50 percent is being pretty typical uh, across our partner base. Um, I guess one more one more question that I've got here. Um, please do, you know, add in if you've got any more questions. But uh, how does it work on a mobile device uh, with the three columns? So. Um, the platform is a responsive platform, so you can view the platform on a mobile, and also the uh, newsletter is uh, mobile um, optimized. So again, the newsletter, as you've sort of seen it, the examples that I showed from Nutanix, 
you know, they will appear like that through a mobile device as well as through the newsletter. So in exactly the same way as you see them uh, coming through your email, they'll just come in the same way through your mobile device. Uh, please do let me if you know if you've got any other questions. Um, so there's one question here just about uh, about costs, kind of how do we, you know, cost this out? Um, so there's really uh, what we do is we look at the number of contacts that you're distributing your newsletter to. So what does the database of users that you've got look like that you're putting sending your newsletters through to? And they've you know, typically range from sort of 3,000 contacts to, as I said, sort of 250, 300,000 contacts in the system. Um, so quite a quite a wide range of uh, users there. Um, but the lowest level typically is sort of sort of uh, you know probably about 3,000 contacts in the, in the system. Um, and that's a subscription. That's a monthly license fee. We do have a setup fee. There's a setup to set up a site in terms of the configurations and train everybody up get everybody up to speed on how they create and approve content through the system um, and obviously also help design and embed that newsletter into the into the system. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So there's a setup fee and then that ongoing license um, subscription fee. And we can start things on a on a regional basis and then uh, move things to a global basis um, or, or go, you know, start off with a with a global basis. It all depends on you know how how you your partners will receive it best, and how you think is uh, the best way to roll it out. And quite often, we've seen some you know, pretty good success trying it out in the region, and then moving it to a to a global basis. Great. I don't see any other questions coming in at the moment. Um, if there is any last questions, please do let me know. Um, otherwise, you know, I will record this, and um, it will be sent out with the sort of follow up to thank you for joining us on the webinar today. Uh, obviously, I'm more than happy to provide sort of one-on-one -on -one demonstrations um, and uh, presentations, give you an opportunity to take a more deeper dive into the platform. Um, we're obviously uh, bringing on a number of new clients uh, recently and we'll continue to you know, bring on new clients. So we'd love to have you all on board and using the platform and increasing your engagement with your partners and potentially your, your employees. I certainly appreciate the time you've spent with me today. I know you're all extremely busy, so I appreciate the time and attention you've uh, spent on this webinar. Um, for now, I will close things down. If you've got any follow-ups, please do um, let me know uh, through my email, which is mikecotton at purechannelapps.com, um, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Thanks again for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. All the best. Bye for now.